Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So for today's video, I'm actually super excited because we're actually filming on my brand new camera. So hopefully the quality is a little bit better for you guys. But basically today, we're just gonna be going over some of the common mistakes that beginner fish keepers make. I wouldn't consider myself like an expert or anything like that. And I would probably still consider myself a beginner. So I've literally just wrote down a list of mistakes that I know I've definitely made before. And I really do hope this video helps you, whether you're a beginner or you're just looking to get into the hobby. But yeah, I guess without any further ado, let's just jump straight into today's video. So as for the first mistake I think a lot of beginners make, it's overcomplicating their setup. So a lot of the time, if you're a beginner, you're just getting into the hobby and you don't really have like much knowledge on the hobby, you're obviously gonna go to like a pet shop or a local fish store and ask them about it. And usually they're gonna just wanna try and upsell, so just sell you extra things that you don't really need. And I do think this can definitely overcomplicate your setups. So what I mean by overcomplicating is just buying like expensive lighting, expensive filtration, all of these like different chemicals that they say you need but you actually don't. And obviously all of this stuff is super expensive and all of those expenses add up and can quite quickly make you lose your love for for your aquariums or for fish keeping. So all of my setups behind me are literally, I think probably about $50 each. They cost barely anything to set up and they're super easy to take care of. So yeah, what I'm trying to say basically is that it just shouldn't cost too much to set up your aquarium and there's no need to overcomplicate it whatsoever. But yeah, I do think overcomplicating setups is definitely a mistake made by a lot of beginners. Okay, so moving on to the next mistake that I think a lot of beginners make, it's not properly understanding the nitrogen cycle. So this is definitely a mistake I made in the beginning just because I didn't think it would really affect my fish keeping too much whatsoever. But obviously if you do keep a lot of fish, you do know that the nitrogen cycle is like a crucial part of fish keeping. So basically, if you don't know what the nitrogen cycle is, it's a biochemical cycle that circulates throughout your water and it converts nitrogen through three main forms. So basically, first of all, all sorts of excess food and fish waste is broken down into ammonia and this ammonia is converted to nitrites through nitrifying bacteria and then those nitrites are converted to nitrates through nitrifying bacteria and then these nitrates can either be taken out like through water changes or they can be absorbed by aquarium plants obviously that's just me briefly explaining it there's so much more to it but that's like probably the easiest way I could explain it. So this cycle is super easy to understand. You literally just have to like go on Google, look up nitrogen cycle in your aquarium and you just read a few things on there and you could quite quickly like fully understand what the nitrogen cycle is. But yeah, not understanding it is definitely another mistake I think a lot of beginners make. Moving on to the next mistake on our list. This one sort of goes hand in hand with not understanding the nitrogen cycle and that's not using live plants in your aquarium. So as you can see behind me, I have heaps of live plants. I'm a firm believer in live plants. I think they're like a cheat code in fish keeping. So not only do live plants just look like super cool, I mean, they just make your tank look really green and cool but obviously they also remove any nitrates out of your water so when i say not using live plants there's two main ways you can use live plants in your aquarium so as you can see behind me you can literally just have them in your water so you can get all sorts of stem plants mosses all sorts of aquarium plants and those guys will just sit in your water and grow and then you can get ones like these ones up behind me and this is actually some philodendron xenodu and what you do is you just have those roots in your water so you may be able to see behind me there's like the root ball back there. So it doesn't really matter what sort of plant you have, both styles work really well in aquariums. So in my opinion, there's three main reasons you should have live aquarium plants. Number one, obviously they can suck out all the nitrates in your water, making it a lot safer for your fish, which obviously does mean you don't need to do as many water changes. Number two, they provide heaps of hiding spots for your fish. So as you can see behind me, my tanks are full of live plants. There's plenty of spots for fish to hide and it just does promote breeding. It promotes all sorts of natural behaviors and they're just super beneficial for your fish. And then number three, they actually oxygenate your water. So obviously all plants photosynthesize and these guys produce oxygen as a byproduct, which is obviously again, super beneficial for your fish just because your fish breathe oxygen. But yeah, not using live plants is definitely another super common mistake a lot of beginners make. Moving on to the next mistake on our list, this one only really applies for like a few fish species and that's not using a heater. So obviously species like Danios or guppies, they don't really need a heater depending on where you live. Obviously if you live in like 
Antarctica, they're gonna need a heater. But for most places, there's definitely varieties of fish that you can keep unheated. So I think the main reason people don't really get a heater is because number one, they can be expensive to buy and number two, they can be expensive to run. So if you don't have a heater in an aquarium with fish that need heated water, you will actually notice that their health diminishes rapidly. So your fish may become more lethargic, they may stop eating and they may just literally just die. But another thing that can happen is they can get white spot or all sorts of fungal infections. And if you are a beginner, you definitely don't want to be dealing with that sort of stuff. It can quite quickly like gross you out or I don't know, you just don't want to see your fish struggling and dying. So a heater is definitely vital if you're wanting to keep tropical fish that need heated water. But yeah, I definitely do think that's another common mistake that a lot of beginners make. Moving on to the next mistake on our list. This one doesn't really affect your fish, but it can just make you lose your love for the hobby. And that's not understanding proper lighting schedules. So lighting can be super tricky for beginners. I know I struggled with it a lot. But the main reason I'm talking about lighting is because if you are keeping your lighting on for too long, you will notice that a lot of algae starts to grow in your aquarium. And if you have watched some of my previous videos, you will know that I actually love algae. I do think it's definitely beneficial for beginners to have some algae in their aquarium, but a lot of people are turned off by algae and don't really like it that much, particularly if you're a beginner. So when I was a beginner, I used to get a lot of algae in my aquarium and that's just because I left my light on for like basically 24 seven. And I thought it was like toxic and it just didn't look good. So I had to figure out some sort of way to get rid of it. And luckily for most people, it's as easy as just turning your light off earlier or turning it on later. And that should just restrict the amount of algae growth in your water. But yeah, not understanding proper lighting schedules is definitely another super common mistake a lot of beginners make. And then moving on to the final mistake on our list, we have overfeeding your fish. So obviously when everybody gets their fish, they love it to bits. They just wanna like plump it up, give it as much food as it wants. But this can obviously be super bad for your fish. So obviously it's the same with like any other pet. You can't just keep feeding them. Obviously that's gonna be super unhealthy for them and you just don't want that. And also the thing with fish is obviously you have to control their whole environment. If you're overfeeding them, all of that excess food is gonna just contribute to the nitrogen cycle, like I said before. So yeah, not only can overfeeding be bad for your water quality, it can fatten up your fish, but it can also cause all sorts of swim bladder problems. So if you're overfeeding your fish, particularly flake food, where they actually have to come up and eat it from the surface, they can actually get like a little bit of air in when they're doing that, and that can make them float. So sometimes I get it with my denios, just because I feed them a lot of baby brine shrimp and the baby brine shrimp eggs can actually do that to them. Luckily, most of the time it's not fatal and it's pretty curable, so I haven't lost many fish from doing that. So I'm pretty sure the rule of thumb is like you feed them as much as they can eat in like two or three minutes, I think it is, and then you just suck out the rest of the food through like a siphon or you can just like pick it out, I guess. And you only really wanna do this one to two times a day. You don't wanna be feeding them like consistently, even if they're coming up to the top of your water looking hungry. So yeah, overfeeding your fish tank is definitely another super common mistake I do think a lot of beginners make. So that is gonna bring us to the end of today's video. So I really do hope this video helps a few of you beginners out there or helps anybody who's looking to get into fish keeping. And I think as long as you are wary of these things and try not to make the same mistakes as I did, I think fish keeping can be super fun for you obviously it's like a massive hobby there's so many amazing people in this hobby and there's so many cool fish to collect and it's definitely just a fun little hobby to get into but yeah if you did enjoy today's video make sure to go down and subscribe and while you're down there smash the like button and comment your thoughts on today's video i always love going down there and reading them all and i reply back to every comment i get also let me know what you think about the new camera i hope it like makes the quality better. I'm looking at like the screen right here. It looks a little bit better. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in that next video.